I got a crazy one here. This is a 2001 Chevy Express van 2500 with a five liter engine. It has a severe lean running condition popping through the intake. And uh, what we've done so far is we've smoke tested the intake and we found all kind of vacuum leaks with the PCB system and grommets and uh, the air intake tube where it goes to the throttle body and all kind of stuff. And this thing had some engine work done to it. The cylinder heads were off and, and uh, had some valve issues. So they gave it to us when it was all done and truthfully we, we probably had a couple hours on this van locating a lean condition and uh, it runs great right now. Uh, we have the air cleaner still off, at least the front side of it. Just running it this way, making sure we don't have any other leaks. And what I want to do first is get you a shot of the, of the freeze frame data and show you how this thing's running. So there's your shot of your scan data. Short term, long term fuel trim, everything looks pretty good. The long terms are a little bit in the negative range. Now this thing's been running bad for a while and I don't know with how long it was running the way it was that maybe an oil change is, is in order to bring these fuel trim numbers back into a better range but still plus or minus 10% we won't argue with these numbers. They look great. Next thing I'm going to do is rev it a couple times let you guys hear the way it hear the way it revs up. So I'm going to focus you back on the engine. Okay give me some snap throttle Ryan. Okay, that sounds pretty good. It revs good. It's not popping anymore. And uh, so, you know, we were happy with it. After we fixed all these vacuum leaks, we're done, right? We're putting everything back together. And I had uh, I had some of my guys throw the scans on it so we could double check our fuel trim numbers. We were at like positive 50 before. And uh, now we're good, as I just showed you. So what, what we did is we just simply put the air cleaner back on. And I know I gotta tighten these, tighten these clamps up and, and everything to get it situated the way it's supposed to be, but before we even got a chance to do that, we noticed the engine started to run a little bit funny. And go ahead and snap it a couple times now. So now it just stalled. All right, start it back up. Snap it again. Hold, see if you can make it bog and pop like it was doing. Maybe not so quick as snaps. pretty good so you, you can see on camera the hesitation the popping through the intake so now all of a sudden we got our lean condition back as soon as we put the air cleaner housing on so the thing about this housing is this is in the front of the mass airflow it's not behind it we're not worried about air leaks typically in front of a mass airflow only behind a mass airflow let me get you a shot of the fuel trim numbers again with this air cleaner housing on what I'm going to do is take this housing on and off a couple times for you guys and show you. So if you look at our long-term, short-term fuel trim, I've had this on long enough that the long-term is actually corrected now. And we're looking at like a positive 25% total fuel trim, which we didn't have just a few minutes ago. So I take the... I'm going to take the air cleaner housing back off now. Let's watch the fuel trim numbers. Again, this is in front of the mass airflow. What you see is your short term going way negative, which is countering the long term. Basically, what we've done is we've just corrected this lean condition. We'll let that run for a minute. We'll let it stabilize. little lesson on long-term short-term fuel trim too number one job of the short term keep the o2 it's still geometric number one job of the long term is keep the short term at zero we're watching that characteristic take place right now long term is correcting trying to bring that short term back up to zero which is why it's counting back down so you see our numbers are stabilizing do a couple revs for me again this is with the air cleaner off Zoom you out so you can see that. 
What I'm gonna do again is I'm gonna put the air cleaner back on. Notice as soon as I put that air cleaner on, your short term fuel trim numbers are going way high again. So the interesting part with this is this is in front of the mass airflow, not behind it. Get you a shot back down on the engine. The area we typically worry about with mass airflow sensors would be the area behind the mass airflow. Any air leaks back in here is where you have issues. We never really worry too much about what's in front of a mass airflow. And uh, truthfully, it was that thought process that really got us in trouble with this vehicle. I've never seen one do this ever. And if you look at the front of this mass airflow, you see a honeycomb type screen. So this has to do with air straightening and measurements for accuracy. What we noticed is the inside of this air cleaner housing. There's no air filter. And I've never seen anything like this before. But what we believe is happening is with the air cleaner not in here, there's some turbulence that's taking place within this housing and it's messing up the way the mass airflow is calculating the airflow and it's causing our fuel trim issues and our lean conditions. So I'll put this back on now and I'll put it back on with this end cap off of it and I'll get you back on the fuel trim again. And you can see we have completely normal fuel trim numbers with this cap off. I'm just gonna take this cap and, and stick it back on, let you see it. As soon as I put this end cap on this air cleaner housing, you see our short term fuel trim numbers are climbing. Going way positive, so we're, we're running way lean. Again, I would have never thought of that, given this is in front of the mass airflow. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put an air cleaner back in this. We didn't even know it was missing, never even paid attention to it. We're gonna put an air cleaner in here. See what these readings look like when we do that. I don't think this is the right one here, fellas. It looks wrong. Okay, no it's not. Before I put this air cleaner in, let me get you a shot of the inside of this. Again, there's a, uh, there's a, a raised piece in here, so this air cleaner is going to go and sit basically inside of that area. And then the cap. So the air cleaner is now in place and we don't have that big open chamber now. I think again that swirl effect was messing us up. I'm going to put this back on. We're going to look at our fuel trim numbers again. Just with the air cleaner now in place. completely normal fuel trim numbers. And uh, I needed to show you guys this because I've never seen anything like this. We had actually a couple hours trying to find lean conditions on this car. We got our butts kicked by it. Uh, we found a bunch of vacuum leaks. None of it was really correcting our main issue. And I think this is a good lesson for you guys that like your cold air intakes and modifying air cleaners and putting uh, straight tubes in where they don't belong is this type of condition, you, you change the way a mass airflow sensor reads that airflow and you can add problems to your car. So do your research by all means, be careful with these aftermarket quote cold air intakes. A lot of problems in our field when people modify the air intake. Look what a simple air cleaner did to this car. Change the, change the entire characteristics of how the airflow is measured on this thing. 
Now I know some of you probably want to see before and after mass airflow readings and all that. I'm not doing that for this video. I think that was good enough of a warning just showing you the fuel trim numbers. I would have never thought about it. We missed it. I think it's a real good one for you guys to pay attention to. Uh, let's get one last rev or two on this with the air cleaner now installed. See what it sounds like, yep. All right, that's good. Unbelievable. Missing air cleaner element. Now I have seen this on a Ford where the air cleaner housing is actually sealed by the air cleaner but that's not the case on this one. This was simply a airflow swirl effect with that filter element missing. Pretty amazing. All right, I just wanna make sure that I'm making myself clear here with, with why we didn't think to go in this direction. When you're dealing with mass airflow problems, here's your mass airflow sensor right here. What you're generally thinking of is anything downstream of the mass airflow. Anything in this area, leaks in here, leaks in the air intake hose, vacuum leaks, PCV system, things like that causing lean conditions. You're generally not thinking in front of the mass airflow unless there's something that's sealing it and directing the airflow into the mass airflow that would be missing. That's not the case here. With this one, I still have this hose clamp loose, so I'm gonna pop this back off real quick. With this setup, there is nothing that seals this here that we would have to worry about. This is an intact unit. All of the air coming into this doesn't need to be directed by anything. So we didn't even think to look in front of this for our source. Now I mentioned a Ford before. If you look at some of the Ford designs with the big giant air cleaner housing and you look at the mass airflow inside of it, the air cleaner actually seals that area and directs the airflow through the mass airflow. So you leave an air cleaner out of one of those designs, it's gonna run lean. Not the case here. So with this one, the only explanation for what was causing our problem, if it's not a lack of air traveling through here, it would be the swirl effect that was being created by this style of air cleaner housing. That with that air cleaner missing, that airflow was coming straight into here, swirling around and affecting how that mass airflow was reading. So again, we want to be careful guys with these aftermarket air intake systems where you're repositioning the mass airflow, you're changing the dynamics of how that mass airflow reads, you can generate a lot of problems. Lean conditions of course, rough running conditions, improper fuel control, a uh, real good lesson here for us, real good lesson for me. Missing air cleaner element was the main problem with this vehicle.